Now at 10, a homicide case closed. A killer kills himself. The details of a 2021 double murder mystery coming up. Plus, so many different platforms, social media, and applications that kids can be on. So, you know, it's not just one, it can be a lot of them. Staying in the know about cybersecurity after a 13 year old boy is kidnapped. What police are saying you can do to keep your children safe. And stacks of unclaimed luggage at Salt Lake International Airport, frustration mounting, travelers left in limbo. The traveling nightmare continues. Live from Utah's first TV station, ABC4 News celebrates 75 years. And welcome to ABC4 News at 10 o'clock. I'm Emily Flores. Glenn Mills has the night off. We do begin tonight with a new storm approaching. We'll get to the latest on the weather in just a moment. But first, can we just take a look at the stunning view of Big Conwood Canyon today? Nice and clear today, but changes are coming yet again. And for that, let's check in with meteorologist Thomas Skiboy in for Alana Brophy for the latest on conditions. Thomas. Yeah, we got a lot more snow on the way to our mountains. And if you want to see more of that video or pictures sent in from Chris Williams, just head over to my Facebook page, Thomas Skiboy WX. But as we were going throughout this evening, things are a little bit calmer compared to what we've been talking about over the last couple of days. Mostly cloudy skies along the Wasatch Front and the view with our Colonial Flag camera. It's 37 degrees right now in Salt Lake. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see a few flurries in northern Utah. Meanwhile, southern Utah today have seen times of rain and snow and up around Bryce Canyon saw times of snow earlier. That has since stopped, but you can see the roadways are still running a bit on the wet side, so be careful if you're heading out late tonight. Most of the wet weather has found its way more so into eastern Utah, where around Moab we're seeing some light snow, just a few flurries in northern Utah. But what I want to do now is expand the view a little bit and you look off towards the Pacific, where a warm front is now working its way into California. This is one of a couple of systems that's going to be working its way in our direction starting tomorrow, lasting through the New Year's Day weekend. And this, these systems are going to be tapping into the atmospheric river currently in the Pacific, also known as the Pineapple Express. And we're going to be finding plenty of moisture across the Beehive State over the next several days. In the meantime, tonight, just a slight chance for a few passing showers with low elevation rain, maybe a little bit of rain, still a possibility in St. George. But if we see wet weather elsewhere. It's mainly going to be as light snow, but we'll see an overnight low of 31 in Salt Lake, 22 in Logan, 36 degrees in Lake Powell and 26 degrees in Bluff. But by the time we get into tomorrow morning, we'll have alerts go into effect from our central mountains to our northern mountains. A winter storm warning will begin tomorrow morning and will last through five o'clock in the morning on Monday as we could see one to three feet of snow in our central and northern mountains, maybe isolated up to four feet. The Wasatch back will also be included in a winter storm warning that begins at eight o'clock tomorrow morning. And then eventually our, our southern mountains will be included in a winter storm watch that begins on Saturday. So heavy mountain snow expected over the next several days. Meanwhile, down in our valleys, it's a trickier forecast because we're going to see some warmer air moving. We could see times of snow, rain and even a wintry mix, but we're going to break down all the details and go over the timeline coming up in just a few minutes. Emily. All right, Thomas, thank you. Well, it's been a mystery for more than a year now, and tonight the double murder in Moab is solved. Police saying they finally have enough evidence to name Adam Pekowitz as the man behind the newlyweds deaths in 2021. But before he could be arrested, police say Pinkowitz committed suicide. ABC 4's Ali Rulian has the latest. The bodies of newlyweds Crystal Turner and Kylan Schulte found shot dead near a campsite in Moab on August 18th, 2021. The case is now closed, but the killer police are identifying is dead. Obviously he was alive. This would be a situation where we have enough to place him under arrest and we feel like we would be able to take him to trial and get a guilty conviction. Investigators say the murderer is Adam Pinkowitz, a former co-worker of Turner's, was known to be aggressive to some and homophobic towards the newlyweds relationship. Kylan's father was told Pinkowitz was the likely killer back in May. The guy that worked with the girls at McDonald's, the one who uh, never came back for his last paycheck. Pinkowitz allegedly fled to Iowa after the murder, where he met his significant other. The significant other later telling police Pinkowitz admitted to him he murdered two women in Utah before committing suicide. They say the significant other told them Pinkowitz murdered the couple in their tent, a detail police never released, verifying his statements. The only way they would have gotten that information would have been from Adam. 
Investigators say Pinkowitz was at the couple's campsite, setting up his things uncomfortably close to them while they were camping. The couple called him creepy camper to their friends, not recognizing who it was. Police say he deleted all photos of himself in Moab during that time off of his phone, finding search results for the same type of bullets used in the couple's murder and memos in his phone saying he constantly had the urge to kill and rape people, despite him already being dead. Kylan's father says his daughter still found justice. I do not I do not have to face him. He's already been sentenced. He's already in hell and our work's done. Yes. <laughs> Again, that was Ali Aurelian reporting. And a recent kidnapping sounding the alarm on the importance of online safety. An Arizona man accused of kidnapping a 13-year-old boy. They were found in Nebraska Wednesday morning. The 26-year-old man was arrested. ABC 4's Kayla Baggerly has the story. Police say that man started talking to the boy through the online game Roblox. They want to raise awareness on online safety saying parents should have conversations with their kids early on and should sit down with them and see what they're doing online. They're not going to go away. That's the most important thing to know. They are not going away. They're, they're educated and savvy on how to use these systems to get victims. That's what they do. And so the parents need to know that there is an enemy out there that they need to guard their children against. Detective Ken Hansen with the Unified Police Department says that although there is plenty of harmless communication online, parents need to be aware of the dangers that can present themselves. He says parents need to know that predators use multiple platforms to try and get in contact with children, including social media and ones parents might not think of as often, like online games. There's so many different platforms, social media and applications that kids can be on. So, you know, it's not just one, it can be a lot of them. He says predators can be persistent. The biggest things parents can do, learn about online platforms and have conversations about what children should look for. He says often predators will try to gain the child's trust and try to show interest in what they like. There are predators out there waiting to make that connection and they will spend days, weeks, months you know, working on these kids, kind of mirroring what the kids are interested in to try and, to try and get a victim. They'll put a lot of time into this. So it may take, it may just be one day, but a lot of times it's months. So they have to, the communication between the child and the parent is key so that they can catch these guys, you know, before they do anything. He says to let your kids know that they can come to you with any worries they have. And if you notice any suspicious behavior online, to contact police. Reporting from the newsroom, Kayla Baggerly, ABC4 News. All right, thank you, Kayla. Well, tonight, a 40-year-old man arrested after stealing items from Walmart and hiding them in a dog food bag. Officers from the Ogden City Police Department called to live view secure, to view live security footage of the man, later to be identified as Stanton Powell, concealing items in a bag of food and attempting to walk past the front doors of the store. Powell was booked in Weber County Jail and is facing charges of possession or use of a controlled substance and possession of drug, drug paraphernalia and retail theft. And a new lift in Lerner area announced by Brighton tonight. The lift seen here named by the Caterpillar that was named by popular vote, of course. The lift along with the new Lerner area by Great Western opens tomorrow. Brighton saying their beginner terrain has expanded and the Brighton uh, Snow Sports School cannot wait for more to come to learn to ride. Okay, coming up at 10. Southwest Airlines announcing it will fly a nearly normal schedule by tomorrow, but what are employees saying about this system-wide failure? And we have the latest on the winter storm across the nation responsible for at least 60 deaths, more than half in New York alone. And with our break, or a break in our weather earlier today in northern Utah, just an absolutely stunning image captured at Bear Lake by Carol Dyer. But by tomorrow, Bear Lake's got a lot more snow on the way, and our mountains will have a lot more snow over the next few days. We'll break down those details coming up in Utah's most accurate forecast shortly after the break. Stay with us.